what it's about. In Luke, the 13th chapter, there's verse 18, and it's got a paragraph marker. That means there's a new thought right there, and that thought runs all the way down to verse 23, where there's another paragraph marker at 24. So you always go in the King James Bible between paragraph markers to get the complete thought, okay, or the thought marker. Now, the Lord was talking to him, and he said, he said, unto what is the kingdom of God like? And whereunto shall I resemble it? Okay, the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom we're talking about of saved Christian believers, born-again believers. It's like a grain of mustard seed which a man took and cast into his garden. Now, you know, faith, faith is, is a mustard seed of, is, is symbolic of faith. If you, have, if you have faith of a grain of mustard seed, you can move mountains. He said he put it in the ground, and it grew and waxed a great tree, and the fowls of the air lodged in the branches of it. That's how he won this kingdom. And in 1903, we had a glorious spiritual revival. We had one in 1832. Okay, there was a great revival in the first century with the first the, the original apostles and disciples going out and preaching. But after that, there was no word printed, and the scrolls got put away. And from, from, from there, from 200 A.D. till Luther came, there was no word of God. And we had the what? Dark Ages. We now have a dark ages again. We've got lots of Bibles, but they're all polluted and they're perverted. Now, look at this. Here we are. Now, here it says, and again in the verse 20, he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? Oh, again, now this is a second likening. First, he asked about it. He, he said, It's a grain of mustard seed, and it grew up into the big tree like he won his gospel to, on the face of the earth, and it did that. Did it when Paul and those folks were here? Peter and John, and then it had a 1260-year period, and now it came out under Luther in 1534, and then the King James Bible came in 1611, and evangelization took place in, the, in, our, in our time. For 400 and some years, these two Bibles were the Bibles that converted everybody. Now, where in, well, I like in the kingdom of God? It is like leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. Now we have this terrible mess we've got. Three measures of meal. Okay, the Jesuits took the manuscript copies and they debauched them and they completely corrupted them. Paul states, we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. They were corrupting the word of God in Paul's time. How about now? It's even worse. And so the manuscripts have been tampered with. The manuscript copies of copies. There are no original manuscripts. Don't believe that lie that there's original manuscripts. There are none. All the autograph manuscripts are gone. God either preserved his word or he didn't. So it's like leaven. They took a woman. A woman. There's a feminine entity. This is the Church of Rome and the Jesuits. They took the 23rd edition of Nestle's text. And all these Bibles come out of the 23rd edition. 23 is the number for death. What would we say? O thou man of God, there's death in the pot. Out of this wild vine of the Alexandrian manuscript, the, the, the corrupt manuscript ascension, these perverted Bibles all came from that set of manuscripts. The good Bibles came from Antioch. And that was the, the, the Stephanus text, the Peshitta text, the Syriac text, and the old Latin, as they called it. And eventually it was turned into the Luther Bible, and then in 1604 to 1611 into the King James Bible. And she hid, and she hid the leaven in, in, the, in the three measures of meal. They polluted the meal, and then the bread was baked. It came out bad. It came out polluted. That's why in Matthew 17:21, you will not have, you won't have a verse there in these perverted Bibles. In Matthew 18:11, that's missing. Acts 8.37, that's missing. That's just well, three verses of, of 66,000 changes. You, have, you end up with, you end up with, instead of having the word of God, you end up with devil's dung. Just remember, the gourd and the, the, gourd and the zucchini looked alike. The zucco and the, and the zucchini looked alike. All these Bibles say holy on the outside, but they're not. And the Holy Spirit cannot help you if you don't have the right Bible. And that's what Satan knew, and he's perverted the Bibles. Now, the whole kingdom has now been leavened. Now, God never wanted his church to go through the trauma that we're fixing to go through. Already, people have suffered. The reason they're suffering overseas now 
is because the word of God is waning in these places. There is no word. There is no word. And the spirit of God cannot work. And the spirit of righteousness doesn't work. And evil comes in like Idi Amin. Evil comes in like Adolf Hitler. The Germans changed their Bibles in 1890, or 1890 and also in 1924. And they started all these wars. Well, we're now changed our Bibles starting in 1952. And now we're the ones just bombing everybody and blowing everybody away. Oh, yeah, see what happened? We're over there. We blew away uh, Sudan. We blew away their pharmaceuticals over there. Clinton did that. We bombed Bosnia. We're doing all this bombing and killing. It's only for the sake of the New World Order. All those years that I served in the military, I thought I was doing a great service to my country. I really wasn't. I was setting up the groundwork for the New World Order. But we didn't know it. But now we do. A few of us do. And so we have this. Now, the Lord never wanted his church to go through tribulation and trouble. It wasn't supposed to go like that. It was supposed to go like verse 18 and 19. He said it would fill the whole earth, and everything would get better and better and better. That's how God planned it. He wanted things to get better and better with the power of his gospel. But the Jesuits came and changed the Bibles. They changed the Bibles, and now we have these perverted Bibles, and everybody's toting them. Most everybody's carrying these things. The preachers went to a Bible school infiltrated by the Jesuits. They show them a Greek text that doesn't match the King James. They don't know diddly squat about Greek or Hebrew, so they go off, they throw the King James out, and they go trying to read Greek and Hebrew. You can't read Greek and Hebrew. You don't need Greek and Hebrew. God gave you a perfect English Bible. You know, you don't need Greek and Hebrew. You don't need a strong concordance. Don't use the Greek and Hebrew in a strong concordance. You don't need it. And now the reason we've got to go through all this is because the word of God has been destroyed and negated on planet Earth. Forever, O oh Lord, that word is settled in heaven. If, if, you do, if your Bible does not match what is settled in heaven, you have a counterfeit Bible. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes, the spirit of the Lord is present everywhere. He's om, omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. But if the word of God is not there, he's subject to the word, and if the word has been changed, he cannot work with it. He cannot impart spiritual gifts into your life, salvation, hope, joy, peace, or love, if the word of God is not either bespoken or if it's not written. So they've changed the Bibles, and now we have this horrendous situation on the face of the earth, and we're going to go through pure hell here on the earth pretty quick. It's already started for some people. I mean, this chopper that went over last night, the only thing that kept him away from me, the angel of the Lord sitting around here. And I'm telling you, that's the fact. That is a true fact. I can tell you, the two people... There were friends of mine, two folks, a couple, saw this angel standing near my house. And he was a big one. And uh, this is real. The angel of the Lord campeth round about. And so now we've got this, all these polluted Bibles since 1952. Some of you weren't even born in 52. Most of you listening weren't born in 52. And now we have this polluted bread happening on our earth. Okay? And this is what's happened. Let me give you an example of... of uh, one of these terrible things that happened. We've talked about TW-800, okay? We'll talk about it again here, and I'll give you some examples of what happened. There were two men, according to the Miami Herald, who were Clinton's ex-bodyguards, and they were going to Paris on that plane to expose Bill Clinton's philandering in Arkansas during the presidential campaign in 92. Bill Clinton and Hillary were shipping in the foreign troops, shipping in the foreign equipment, shipping in the foreign cops, they had to stay in office. No matter what, they had to be kept in office. That's why Ron Brown went down. He, he knew too much. Another story. This plane was taken down by a continuous rod warhead missile. It was fired from a black helicopter. Same kind we're talking about. Then the cabin had a picture of the missile streaking up to hit the plane. Next day, they knocked on the door. Give us the picture. They took the picture away from her. She was on national TV either... Uh, either Today Show and or what's that, uh, either Face the Nation or Meet the Press or Good Morning America. She was on one of those shows, and the next day they come and got the picture from her. They shot down this plane and killed 230 people just to get two guys. That's how wicked this thing is. And then they try to tell us that JP4, JP5 jet fuel exploded. Well, that's a bunch of hogwash because JP5 jet fuel will not explode. It will burn rapidly. It will burn furiously if it's, if it's warm enough. 
but it will not explode. The flames will not explode. The fumes will not explode. 